I built a pavilion from old cedar logs laying around on our property. These trees have been laying around here for 20 to 30 years based on the age of alders growing up from where the trees had been standing. I scraped off the old rotten bark from this tree and found that the wood is surprisingly solid after laying around in the Pacific Northwest rainforest for all these years. Getting the first cut to be straight and free of any twist is critical. And I spent more time than is shown here getting the extension ladder leveled and set. After making that first cut, I could see that the wood was in amazing condition. This first beam is about seven by 12 inches, and I cut it into the two main beams that when finished were three by 10 inches by 20 feet long. I cut the rest of this log into two and a quarter inch slabs for milling into two by fours, as in two inches by four inches, rather than lumber yard size, which is three and a half by one and a half. Then I started hauling the wood into the shop. I carried what I could out to where I could get it on the four wheeler. Pulled the bigger pieces out with a drill winch. This is a clip from hauling in firewood, but you get the idea. On to the next log. To build this pavilion, I need two 20 foot 3x10s, two 14 foot 3x10s, two 14 2x10s, a 12 foot uh, 2x8 ridge beam. Ooh, I probably saw a spider. Four 9 foot 2x6 gable beams a pile of 2 by 4s for rafters, and a bigger pile of 1 by 4s for roof decking. And last, four posts, 7 by 7 that are 10 feet tall. I got the rest of the beams from this log, and then dragged them into the shop for milling. The main beams were too big and heavy for my small table saw and planer. But the skill saw worked great. However, Three inches was too thick for a single pass, so trimming the ends required cutting it from both sides. Then I used a combination of electric hand planer and belt sander to finish up all of the sides and edges. I was able to handle the weight of the shorter beams, the 14 footers, well enough to put them through the planer, which is better than the hand tools because the final thickness is perfectly even along the whole beam. All of the rest of the beams were small enough so that I could handle them with the table saw and the planer. I needed about 40 2 by 4s and I'd get between 2 and 4 boards from each slab, so it was a lot of slabs. The workflow starts with cutting one straight edge, then cutting about 4 and an eighth inch wide pieces on the table saw, then planing down to 2 inches, then squaring up one edge on the joiner, and last squaring up the other edges in the planer ending up with boards that are exactly two inches by four inches. Milling the one by fours was much the same, except I ran the whole stack of slabs through the planer first. Then I cut strips on the table saw, ending up with three quarter inch thick by three inches. Making the posts was a bit more involved, but before we get to this stage, it's time to go to the skull log. We've had this old abandoned Halloween decoration just sitting along our trail for a few years, and last spring a storm brought a cedar tree down almost right on top of it. And I was bummed it came down, because it was a really cool tree, about 85 years old, but growing up out of a stump left over from when this whole area was logged 114 years ago. But it did come down, and it was also perfect for making into posts. I did some field milling, then dragged in the pieces, blocked them up, flattened one end with the hand planer, made a final chainsaw cut and planed the other sides. The long level helps as a straight edge to make sure I'm taking care of all the subtle humps and swales. And last, sand out the small ridges left over from the planer. The main beams and cross beams will be joined where they sit on top of the posts. And I wanted a top cut that allows the top of the post to bolt into the beams as well. I used actual pieces lopped off from the end of the beams as templates to mark where, the, where to cut the posts. And then got the job done using the skill saw, hand saw, reciprocating saw, and even a bit of chisel work. Then a quick round over on the edges with the router. I actually pre-built this thing in the barn. Maybe I'm getting soft in my old age, but it was nice to be out of the rain and the wind and close to the chop saw while I repeatedly worked on getting the rafter angles right. The calculations were straightforward, but I'd still be off by like a degree, which is enough to leave an obvious gap rather than a good fit. 
before dismantling, I labeled every board. So rebuilding on the patio would be easier, you know, even easier than an Ikea kit. Kind of like adult Lincoln Logs. <laughs> the, the younger generation's going like, what? Lincoln Logs? It worked great though, the pre-build. But if I ever build my own house, I'm gonna need a bigger barn. I did all the finish work pre-build also, which included a lot of sanding, rounding the edges, and a stain that was also a sealant. Finally, the build. Best way to get these boards to the patio is to carry them straight through the house. I got the posts and beams bolted together, and my sister and brother-in-law came over to help us with the raising. Best deal ever for hired labor, because all it cost me was some beer and a few grilled steaks. For that, I might build things we don't even need. With the main beams up and braced, we bolted on the end caps, and then dropped in the main cross beam, which will carry a chunk of the roof load. Next, we put up the ridge beam, which I didn't completely dismantle after pre-building in the barn. After getting the structure squared, braced, and bolting the legs to the patio, I installed the rafters, and it was so nice to have everything pre-cut and fitted. The rafters are on 18 inch centers and I spaced the decking every foot except the steeper edges, they're a little bit closer. I didn't do any of the decking pre-build in the barn because it's pretty simple, e even for me. bought a stack of three by eight foot steel sheets for the roofing and last put up a one by six faceplate all around the rafter edges for trim. We put up outdoor curtains for shade when needed and even hung clear vinyl to hold back the blowing rain and wind during the winter months. With all of this done, it's time to kick back.